Mirkwood is one of my favourite environments in all of Middle-earth. Treacherous and unnerving, I have always wanted to make some terrain for the woodland realm. My plan was to make scatter terrain using three key parts shown in the films and the books. The Elven Road, the Black River, and of course, trees. As you might imagine, the first place I started was the trees. I picked out four plastic bonsai trees from eBay. They're from China, they're roughly four pounds each. And they give you a nicely scaled tree with some interesting texture. I pulled off all of the plastic leaves to expose the bare canopy. I did order four different types of trees, but as you can see, they've actually sent me three of the same. Yeah, I was a bit annoyed by this, I'm not gonna lie, but I realized I could make do by modifying the look of some of the trees. After the trees were bare, I snipped off the little nubs at the bottom, which attached them to the plant pots, so they would sit flat on a base. Next, I removed the dangly bits so they could be used as root systems later on. To change up the poses of those trees that were the same, I bent some of the branches and I cut some of the branches off and stuck them around just to change the profile. There's lots of ways to make rivers but I wanted this to be as quick and easy as possible so I bought these river moulds from Amira Plastics. It's vacuum formed plastic so it's very light. They look good, they work well and they're cheap but did encounter a few problems a bit later on but I'll show you that when we get to it. For attaching the trees to the base I used a simple bead of hot glue and then stuck it down. When Thorin's company arrives at Mirkwood in the films, they're greeted by this statue in the Elven Gate. At first I thought this was Galadriel, as they look very similar, but it's actually King Thranduil's late wife. By converting a Galadriel model, I've been using it as an objective marker, but I decided I wanted to include it into the scenery. So just like the trees, she's hot glued in place and we carry on. I wanted her in there as a symbol to show how the beauty of Mirkwood had been defiled by the forces of the Necromancer. The bases I'm using are 4 mil beveled MDF, cut in all wacky shapes. You can make your own, but I decided to buy these. The ground texture was Geek Gaming Scenics Modeling Compound. Mix a 2 to 1 ratio with water, then apply it onto your surface. I applied it in thin tracks to start with, this was so I could get the elven road texture. To do this, I used a texture roller from Green Stuff World and I wetted it and then rolled it straight over the top and that's going to leave a really hard texture behind. After that set, I mixed up another batch of the modelling compound and applied it to all the areas that weren't covered. I let it firm up slightly and then I used a wet finger to smooth it out to make it look more natural. This modelling compound is really good, it's really strong and it's going to hold everything in including the trees. When it's set though, I went around it with a kind of scraper, just a scraper for the excess to give a nice smooth beveled edge. To make the ground coverage seem like a more natural forest texture, I was using coconut fibers. You can buy it ground up, but I bought it in this big brick, and I thought you had to literally break it apart with a hammer, but after much trying, uh, ended up you could just rip it apart with your hand, so I decided to do that instead. By tearing it off the brick and crushing it up by hand, it gives a really nice fine texture with subtle kind of roots and fibers in it. This stuff's a really good buy economically, it looks really good and I've barely used any so I'll have enough probably for life. To apply it I just simply lashed on a bunch of PVA glue, or white glue if you're in America, and sprinkled on all of the coconut fibre. Remember those dangly bits we cut off earlier? Here's the root systems I was talking about. So all I did was drop them on top of the surface as it was drying and I dropped some super glue on top of it. The super glue will mix with the PVA and kind of set quite hard so they won't be coming up anytime soon. I mentioned I had a couple of problems with the river sections. So as you can see with the modeling compound and coconut fiber mix, they look really nice as uh, riverbanks. But as I only did the river banks and not the river bed, the modeling compound was really heavy on either side and of course there's the thin plastic in the middle which flexes. So as you can see, when I was tapping off some of the excess coconut fiber, one of the sides just popped off. And if you do it in the way I've done it, this is a problem you can have right up until the moment you pour the resin in to set in the middle. So in retrospect, I would advise you either put modeling compound everywhere, including the riverbed, so that firms up the middle, or just use coconut fiber on the outside. 
To seal all the ground coverage down, I used a mix of Mod Podge and matte varnish with some water and just sprayed it on top to help it set. You may need to apply quite a few coats of this, but you want to make sure it's very set before you start painting. After the Mod Podge and varnish mix had set, I primed it ready for painting. I used a black rattle can spray primer and then came from a top with a white spray paint. You could easily use an airbrush for this. Mine was clogged, so I just used rattle cans instead. The production designers described the use of colour to show the corruption that was seeping out of Dolgaldor and tainted Greenwood the Great into the Mirkwood we know and love. To replicate this effect on my terrain, I bought the three primary colours of red, blue and yellow and used them to mix various forms of green and turquoises and purples. I diluted these mixtures ever so slightly with a bit of matte medium and a bit of water and then I applied them all over I'm not gonna lie, this went through a heck of a lot of ink, and there's a million other ways to do this. You could use acrylics, you could use spray primers, you could use an airbrush. It was very time consuming, but it was quite enjoyable. And I think more importantly, it actually matches the films quite well. And it's those colors that are gonna tie all of the different textures together, the stone, the bark, and the ground coverage. The Black River of Mirkwood is known for having some supernatural qualities that can send trespassers to sleep it seems to act as a kind of burglar trap, if you like. So to get this dark riverbed, I just mixed a bunch of brown and black acrylic paint onto the riverbed and just smushed it around with a paintbrush. The bright colours look nice, but we need to darken it down and make it more ominous. So I mixed up an oil wash using brown and black oil paint and some odourless mineral spirits. I applied this to all of the stonework and all of the tree trunks, but I couldn't bear to use that much oil on the ground coverage. Also surprisingly it was still a little bit loose, so I made a kind of two-in-one wash and sealant. The darkest colour from the inks was no doubt the purple, so I used that red and blue ink used to make the purple, and I applied Mod Podge, I applied PVA, I applied matte varnish, and uh, a healthy dollop of water with a tiny bit of fairy liquid to help the flow improve and then I just applied it all over and let it seep into the recesses and uh, help bind it all together. When that was all dry, it was really dark and dingy, but I wanted to apply a couple of punches and more colour. So I came back in with that same white spray, sprayed it in a couple of patches, and then reapplied some very bright inks to it. I also stippled a little bit onto the branches, just to make the kind of colour punch a little bit. The last painting stage was to dry brush on some light grey to pick out the raised details on the stone. Moving on to the tree canopies, for these I used Woodland Scenic's Autumn Mix Lichen. To apply I broke it up into little clumps, sprayed some spray adhesive onto the branches and just pushed it on where I wanted it. When the lichen dries you may want to get some scissors and cut away some of the excess to make it look a bit more natural. A bit of pruning. So at this stage I chose to add some vegetation to the ground because it is a forest after all. So after I used a brush to wipe away any of the lichen, I used the small dry leaves to put underneath like leaf fall, I used tufts, I used grass. I didn't use the grass like with a static grass applicator, I wanted it to look more like moss or something, so I just PVA glued it down. For the Black River I mixed up a two part resin called Solid Water and I applied some black and brown oil paint to kind of colour it. That was a mistake in the end. It didn't mix well and it got a bit bitty so I'd probably use a kind of wash or something, maybe something from Army Painter. But for what it is it looks alright. Now I 
poured this all wrong, don't follow me. I sealed it up like an absolute wally. I would have just used layer on layer of masking tape, but I decided to put some cardboard in there. That didn't work. These first couple leaked a little bit. My other ones are a bit more stable. But as you can see, it pours on really easily and gives a really nice kind of dark river effect. As you remember from the clip I showed you of Bilbo, you can see all this leaf debris in there. So I thought, what a good idea to tie this into the rest of the terrain by putting some leaves in there. So all I did was, whilst the resin was still wet, I just simply salt bathed some leaves in there, just sprinkled it on top. Now even though the movies show a very still river, I did think it was important to put a current in there, so they actually appeared to be water. To do this I just ran thin lines of aqua magic, which is a project made for this exact purpose, and that just gives a small kind of current to, to show it's a river. The Black River of Mirkwood is complete, so moving on from the very bottom of Mirkwood, I'm going to be working all the way up to the tippy top. I'm using the autumnal mix from Geek Gaming Scenics to really show off that red. I separated them out into the four shades, red, red brown, orange and yellow and using a plastic box to mix up the colours. I sprayed liberal amounts of yacht varnish, which whilst it's drying is very tacky, so it's perfect for this kind of thing. I picked up the mix of the four colours and just sprinkled it on. I made sure I put less of the yellow in, so it would just accent it ever so slightly, but it wouldn't overpower, so it's still red as a kind of ready brown. I cleaned up the table as this stuff gets everywhere, and then I came back down the next day when it was boiling, so I'm wearing a vest, and then I applied another layer using the same techniques. If you can notice there, I have cling filmed the tree trunks and the ground as the leaf coverage would stick to the ground and it may well ruin what you've just done before. This second layer I applied a lot more ratio of the kind of red to give it that kind of ready feel. After that all dried, I came back in with that same spray varnish I used earlier, the spritz with Mod Podge and varnish and all that to kind of seal it down. With the spray sealant dry, it's on to our very last step. Now nothing epitomizes the corruption in Mirkwood quite like the Mirkwood spiders. Their webs are everywhere and it wouldn't quite feel like Mirkwood to not have them in there. I wanted the material for this to be cheap, easy to use and strong so I could play games on it. And so I ended up using this kind of Halloween decoration spider webbing. It sounds weird, but this stuff was actually really, really good. Really easy to use, very, very cheap. All you had to do was stretch it out and kind of cover over the leaves, and then obviously spray some of that yacht varnish down to make it stick. Now whilst I was doing this, I was hit by a kind of bolt of inspiration. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I could actually stand models on it? So I ended up trying to make kind of walkways and stuff with it. To do this, obviously, you just need to stretch between two branches and you need to stiffen it up so there's not too much of a bounce there so it doesn't break. So to do that, I just applied Mod Podge straight to it and ended up being really, really firm and working quite nicely. The webbing applied, it was just a case of using some very dark brown acrylic paint to paint the base rims and any patches that were still white to make it still seem like earth, and it was finished. I was really pleased with how these came out. I used a lot of new techniques like oil washes and the resin and inks. I think it was quite a nice approximation to the film while still being able to be played on for SBG, so yeah, really, really pleased with it. I've played a couple of games on it since then, and I can't wait to play some more. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I will be making a lot more terrain videos like this, hopefully, in the future, so if there's any places in Middle Earth you want me to make, just comment down the bottom, and uh, subscribe for more stuff. Thanks again for watching. It's been a pleasure. I've been Joe from Windrush Wargamers, and I'll see you in the next one.